Hey crew, I've got the key to this 22 Toyota Tundra. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. 14 years since the second generation Tundra was introduced, now we get a third gen. This one right here is the SR5 trim level with the TRD Sport package. It has the standard twin turbo V6 motor. Later in this video, I will show you a fully loaded range topping 1794 that's gonna have the new hybrid motor, all the bells and whistles. That one will be a crew max configuration. This is the double cab, and that's gonna have the five and a half foot bed. This one has the six and a half foot bed. Let's start up here with the front with the styling. This is one of seven different grill designs that Toyota is offering with the new Tundra, including the TRD Pros grill. This one more subdued with a blacked out. I prefer this with a body color matching surround. We've got Tundra stamped down there. LED headlights and daytime running lights. Turn signals are just down there below, sort of like a teardrop. On the side, the TRD Sport gets these 20 inch wheels blacked out and body color matching over fenders. Tundra in black here. Body color matching door mirrors with a black gloss down below. Stepping back, getting the full truck in view. And coming to the rear, where we see TRD Sport and the new LED taillights. Pretty large exhaust outlet. And at the tailgate, Tundra stamped on it. Let the damping bring it down. And this is a new composite bed, corrosion resistant, dent resistant. It's kind of just like the Tacoma's bed. Let's move to the cabin now. The SR5 grade is going to get fabric seats, this one in the bolder color. The seat bottoms lift up so you have storage. The backs can be pulled down with straps, but these front seats are gonna to need to be pretty far forward to make that happen in the double cab. I'm gonna grab on this grab handle, hop up and in. That's my seating position at six feet tall and you can see I've got yeah, pretty much no knee room back here. My head does clear the roof but the accommodations are not for full-size adults in the double cab. This is for kids back here. You also get no air vents, no USB ports, but the front's where it's at, so let's go over there. Pretty easy to get in and out, even in the double cab. And in the front, we've got four-way power adjustable seats with lumbar, and on the TRD Sport, you get this leather-wrapped steering wheel with perforation in the leather, and it's heated, you get the red TRD Sport start stop button. Grab handle here to get in. Close up this door. And we've got a TRD specific gear selector, drive mode knob. And this one has the optional 14 inch touchscreen display. Wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto are standard even on the eight inch display. We have the smaller 4.2 inch TFT display. You can get a fully digital instrument cluster on the upper trim levels. It's a very nice looking cabin here. You got Tundra over here on the passenger side. Good visibility. All right, and lots of storage in the center console, by the way. Very reconfigurable. Several USB ports. Let's go drive it. All right, let's get it started. And not quite the roar of the outgoing V8, but at least you got a Tundra animation on the TFT. Sure the air is kept low. Apple CarPlay is already ready to go. Ooh, and it takes over the whole display. Look at that. Never seen CarPlay this prominent. Very cool. And the system is just so responsive. It's the same unit they're using in the new Lexus NX. All new for Toyota, new interface. So easy to navigate, so responsive. This is refreshing from a Toyota vehicle because they're typically slow to introduce new technology, but this is great. Happy with that. We're gonna start out in normal drive mode and it being only the four by two model, there isn't four high or four low. We're just in two wheel drive. As I throw it in reverse, it'll bring up the camera system which is comprehensive. You got the overhead view, 
wide angle rear, wide front, wheel shots, you got a bed cam, additional towing views if you're doing that. And let's back it on up. And already we're gonna hit some bumps, which is great. So we can talk about the suspension. It's the big deal, one of the big deals for the new Tundra, as is the engine. We have no longer a leaf sprung rear end. We've got a multi-link with coilovers, double wishbone front suspension. This TRD Sport model adds to that with a TRD tune, TRD tuning for the suspension. Put my foot down. Oh yeah, that's a wheel spin. And power, serious power. This is the new base motor, guys. Three and a half liter twin turbo V6 makes 389 horsepower. That's eight more horsepower than the outgoing V8, and 479 pound feet of torque. That's 78 pound feet more than that old V8. That's a huge chunk. And though we don't know fuel economy for the hybrid that we're going to drive in a minute, we do know it for this new base motor. It is 18 city, 23 highway, and 20 combined. That is for the 4x2 model. 4x4 you lose one combined MPG, so 19. Not bad though. For that amount of power, I think I can deal with missing out on the V8 for that. Back to the suspension for a sec. So I mentioned the double wishbone in the front and the multi-link coilovers in the rear. The TRD tuning, it lowers the vehicle by half an inch. You've got these beefier sway bars for better lateral stability. And it's, it's just a more rigid truck all around. However, the ride is such improved from that double wishbone and the multi-link in the rear. I'm also going to step on the brakes here pretty hard, about 50 miles per hour here, getting on them. Okay, good initial bite, and the pedal is pretty consistent, and then getting out of the corner. Fairly stable doing that. There's a decent level of feedback through the wheel. I mean, I affected, I expected completely numb steering, but I've got some semblance of what's going on with the tires. This is not a handling machine, of course, but the TRD Sport is going to be the most competent handling version of the Tundra, and I'm, I'm impressed. These seats are so comfortable too. I mean, even in fabric orientation, the ergonomics are excellent. The padding in this cushion is awesome. Oh, I feel good. Feels good. Also, with the dashboard kind of pressed back like that, there's a, a generous feeling of space. Wind noise, well, okay, so you got acoustic laminate on this front glass, and that's definitely helped cutting down wind noise coming right at you, but you hear a good amount of it by the window frames. Now this is, as I think I mentioned in the walk around, a pre-production model. So fit and finish of certain components is not going to be perfectly well dialed. So we'll give it a pass for certain creaks and things like that. Get on the brakes. <laughs> the wiggle from the rear end. And just the potency of this entry-level motor. Can't get over it. This truck hustles. This is a lighter orientation of uh, how you can spec up the Tundra. If you get the 1794, we're going to drive later with that hybrid motor. It's going to be a lot heavier. With the four-wheel drives, it's going to be a lot heavier. But this, this motor packs a punch, and this 10-speed automatic gearbox is fantastic. Completely seamless in the way it changes gears. I think I'm most impressed with this transmission. You don't even notice it in the background. Now, if you do want to do some manual shifting, you can click this over. 
and you know it's a it's like the what I expect from the downshifts not urgent now on the power and yeah I mean I, I expected to have to upshift a little before red line because it's gonna trail and it did but you do have that manual control and my goodness in the thick of it in the power band this thing picks up speed so readily and the suspension is just good it's really good it doesn't you know what it doesn't do it doesn't hop like leaf sprung trucks typically do they kind of just hop over bumps this just with the the multi-link and the coilovers it just kind of undulates over them it's a huge difference between this and its leaf sprung competitors this is a solid feeling truck solid riding truck and with this seat comfort i mean yeah you, you want to take your family on a long trip towing a boat behind you be a pretty good way to do it but i think it's time that we swap on over to the 1794 with the new iForce Max Hybrid and see how we like that one. And there it is, the 1794 edition with the iForce Max Hybrid motor. This one's painted in smoked mesquite. I like this color. It's a metallic brown. What I don't like so much is all of this chrome. It just makes that grill stand out so much more than the SR5 TRD Sport we have. This one has a chain link insert, different grill design. And the chrome surrounds, upgraded projector LED headlights here, gray painted over fenders, unique 20 inch wheel designs, 1794 edition badging on the door, iForce Max badging up on the hood, chrome mirror caps, chrome under window trim, chrome door handles, a chrome little garnish down there. Yeah, this car's truck is trying to make a statement. Now what we have here is the Crew Max with the six and a half foot bed, and that is new for 22. You couldn't previously get the Crew Max cab with the six and a half foot bed. It's a big boy truck. Get into the back. One thing to point out here, we've got the hidden tailgate release. So you hit this button. Ideally, you know, the, the concept is like if your hands are full, you can just kind of bump it with your elbow. That brings down both the tailgate and as an option, the bed step. So now, really easy to get in. And in the bed, we've got a 120 volt, 400 watt outlet. Lift it on up and the bed step will disappear. Let's look inside. As we open the doors, power running boards will come down, granting us easy access to this leather trimmed cabin in saddle brown color with perforations in the seat. These seats are heated and ventilated Plus you've got two USB ports and an AC socket. Oh, and uh, air vents, always important. Walnut trim in the doors, more leather, sunshades. Now I'll step up and in. And that's my seating position at six feet tall. Look at this leg room. So lounging back here. Such a contrast to that double cab, panoramic glass roof. My goodness, the luxury level back here, crazy. Ah, and yes, now we have a JBL 12 speaker, 1200 watt sound system. Big upgrade over the six speaker system in the SR5. In the front, tricked ya. In the front, we've got heated and ventilated seats like the rear, heated leather steering wheel, more wood trim, more leather. Now there is a 12.3 inch digital instrument screen, reconfigurable, pretty nifty, shows a one of five national parks every time you start the car. Same 14 inch touchscreen display here, dual zone climate control, wireless smartphone charging there, two speed transfer case for your four wheel drive system, same drive mode selector as the SR5, but now we got a bunch more drive modes. Plus there's trailer backup guide and straight path assist, two new features for the Tundra in 22. This is a good looking cabin. All right, let's drive it. All right, let's get it started in the 1794. There's Yosemite, one of our five national parks that's shown here. That'd be kind of fun. Every time you hop in, it's like, what, what beautiful nature am I going to see on my 
digital gauge cluster. We're going to start out in obviously two wheel drive high because we're going to be attacking some city streets and then drive mode wise. Let's go, let's go normal. It'll just be normal to start. And away we go. Here we have some packed gravel leading to our street drive. And the 1794 now benefits from adaptive dampers in addition to an auto leveling rear air suspension. Very useful if you plan to tow. And this just even more so than that TRD Sport. Feels so good. I'm gonna switch it into Sport Transmission. Just give it a little punch. That's kind of a good soundtrack. I kind of like the noise of that engine. Not a throaty V8, but it still sounds pretty good. And it gets you up to speed. This truck does weigh like 800 pounds more than that SR5 and you, you feel the weight but it's smooth it's very very smooth and the 10 speed dialed in for this powertrain just as good as the last this engine same three and a half liter twin turbo v6 but now it's got a hybrid component it makes 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque that is a ton. It's actually the most when you think about its rivals. The Silverado with its V8 makes 420 horsepower. The F-150 with its twin turbo hybrid makes 430 horsepower. So this makes more power than those and just gobs of torque. And it does cruise well. It already strikes me as a quieter, better riding, more accommodating truck than that SR5. And the engine is content just moseying. We don't know the fuel economy specs for this hybrid powertrain, but I have to imagine even though it makes more power, it's gonna get better fuel economy, especially when it comes to city driving. This is comfy cruising. Now it's waiting until we have the JBL sound system at our disposal for the sound system test, but let's do that. One thing I don't like about this volume, it doesn't show you out of the total volume level you can go, what volume you're at. Bump a bass. So we can get loud. It's a good sound system. Not quite at the level of, you know, the Bang & Olufsen's and, I mean, but like the really good Bang & Olufsen's, not the ones you're gonna find in Ford vehicles, the ones you'll find in Audis and the top tier Bose systems. Not at that level, but that's, that's still pretty good. This, this sound quality starts to waver as the volume cranks in this one. You know, having spent some time in the range topping F-150 Limited and being very impressed with the quality of the cabin in that one, this, I mean, you got the 1794 in walnuts over on the passenger side, this soft touch material on the dashboard with what look like straps of leather. It just looks really, really good. I think it's, it's very much there with the F-150 Limited in terms of interior poshness in a pickup truck. That's just, what is happening in the world? Can't wait to find out how much this one costs. And in fact, any Tundra costs. Now, leading up to this corner, I'm gonna go up to Sport Plus Drive Mode. Yes, there's a Sport Plus Drive Mode in a Tundra. Oh, I can immediately feel the extra throttle response and thrust there hard on these brakes with the extra weight. Oh, there's the understeer. Power out of the hole. 
So good. And again, I like the sound of this powertrain. It's a little artificial, but it's fun. Yeah, and that, that performance in the straight line is very good. The brakes had nice bite to them. And yeah, in Sport Plus, you see the, the change in the digital instrument, cl instrument cluster. We now got red accents there, but it just, the throttle is touchy in like a fun way. Makes you want to just put the pedal down. Get going. Move, Sonata. Elantra. Hyundai product. Move. Got places to go. And I'm in Texas. Good heavens. <laughs> it's fast. It's really fast. Now, without a proper divided highway, I'm not comfortable showing you the driver aids that are available. Actually, they're standard on the new Tundra, but they do include adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist with steering intervention, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alerts. If you want to see some of those features in action, be sure to watch my POV test drive of the TRD Sport. So I do have highway in that one. I am, however, going to show you the turning radius of this Tundra. How much runway do we need? That wasn't a proper U-turn, but it's not, not class leading tight, that's for sure. And as we wrap up this drive, let me conclude my thoughts on the 22 Tundra, having flavored it, tasted it in two different forms. I'll say this. That entry-level powertrain is incredible. This hybrid adds to it, I mean, even more potency, but I also like that soundtrack. I'll wait to see what the fuel economy ratings are officially from Toyota, but either way you go with it, they're great motors. I feel like I'm not gonna miss the V8, and I think those of you watching won't either. The ride quality is also another huge win for this truck. Getting that multi-link with the coilovers and the double wishbone in the front, it just, smooths out everything and stops the hop that you typically typically get in leaf sprung trucks and finally technology in a toyota wow this 14 inch display is just it's so user friendly it's so responsive i love the wireless carplay love that it takes over the whole screen and then i mean this top of the line model if you if you want to go luxury there's plenty of it here so guys those are my pov drive impressions i hope you enjoyed them until next time i'll see you later